Good morning, everybody. Well, yesterday we did see on her Snapchat story, I believe, she said she was in the hospital. And I kind of read a lot of reaction channels. They're not going to be reacting to this due to the nature of it, but... Um, or parody channels, I should say. I'm sure there's going to be some reaction, but I, I heard this is pretty serious that they don't feel right doing a parody. So she was in the hospital, and I'm a little worried for her, cause, and I'm hoping maybe this is a wake-up call, a kick in the pants for her. And uh, Also, good morning. I, j I woke up like an hour ago. I, I slept 12 hours last night, so I guess I needed it. Um, you know, I've, been, I've been pulling some late nights, early morning, so I guess my body was like, hey, we need to rest a little bit. It's Saturday. Let's rest. And as you can see, it's really bright out my window. I'm going to be moving today, not like moving houses, but moving from down here to back up in my room because the cases of the coronavirus, the recovered number is higher than those with the active cases. And also our church is resuming. So the other members of the household are going to church and they're around about the same amount of people at the church as I would be around my office. Our office pretty stays pretty separate, so I'm pretty comfortable moving back upstairs and working around the kitchen, touching things in the kitchen, and, you know, using the same bathroom. That's why I moved down here, so I would cook my own meals down here in the little kitchenette we've got down here, and I'd use the bathroom down here so I wasn't touching things that the other members of the household were touching because I still go to work. I still actively go to a job. <clears throat> and I'll need to get some coffee in me too. <laughs> so today's going to be a pretty full day for me. So I'm going to be moving back upstairs so you'll see a different background, <laughs> which I'm excited about. I, I mean, I've loved staying down here because I can open the door and kind of watch watch my ducks walk around the backyard and sometimes they'll come in here and see me and let me pet them and love them and but it's pretty exciting for me I'm I'm ready to move back upstairs so let's let's see what's up with our sister girl here hey guys <clears throat> so your voice sounds as rough as mine I was about to check my Apple Watch and there's a one what what's the date today um, the 29th right yeah. Oh, Becky's with her. I haven't seen Becky in a while. Okay. So, it's May 29th, and, um, I... Coffee. Um, I have a lot of videos, a lot of videos, that, um, I recorded for you guys, but none of that seems important right now, because, um... I went to the hospital last night, and, uh, so, I'm just gonna kinda explain what happened, so you guys kinda know what I'm going through, um, the comments will be turned off in this video, and, uh, no monetization, nothing, so. Oh, honey, honey, you, I, you seem scared, you look, you look rough, sweetie. Um, I've been having female problems for a very long time, and, um, I, uh, I've done so much crying, it's like the tears don't want to come out anymore. <laughs> so, I've never been to a gyno, and that's my fault, which I get. Oh, honey, 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 honey. Oh, sweetie. Uh, yeah, that's, I, I had, I mean, I, I think I went to my first lady doctor pretty late in my life. I, I waited till I was, I think, 22 or 23 years old because <laughs> I was scared of a, you know, a, a dude seeing me down there, but I realized you have to, you have to have that happen. And I grew up very Christian and conservative and I was scared of it, but I was 22 or 23 years old, and I I get it. You're you don't want to cross that, and but I mean it's it's something you need, and that's how I found out. I I do have PCOS, and it's something fairly common. And 
it's it's not that bad for me. I have a very mild case of it. I don't hurt. I don't cramp. It's just when it comes, it comes. So that's a little TMI for you. <laughs> but oh, honey, sweetheart. Get it? Um, it's very apparent that I've done this to myself. So last night I went to the bathroom and I went pee. And um, when I stopped peeing, there was still stuff coming out of me. It sounded just like I was peeing. I went to stand up and the whole toilet was filled with blood. That's what happened to me when I found out I did have PCOS. I mean, it just... One of my... One of my cysts... Uh, or, yeah, it's, it's where you have, like, you know, cysts on your ovaries. One of my cysts just bust, and it came out. And I don't want to... I'm not trying to diagnose her, but I was told from my gynecologist that that's a good thing, that they're coming out. And I'm like, well, it's really not a good thing for me. He's like, well, you, you don't want them to stay in there. So that's what sounds like so what's happening to her. So it is scary. It's scary when it happens. I, I thought I was going to die. So I get it. I get she's scared. I was terrified. I was crying. And I mean, looking back now, I'm like, well, yeah, I didn't want it to stay in me, but at that moment, you don't know. Like, when I first had a kidney stone, I didn't know it was a kidney stone. I thought I broke my back. I didn't know what was going on. I <laughs> And I went to the hospital, and they said, yeah, you had a kidney stone. I was like, oh, my gosh. So when I had the second kidney stone, I was like, oh, okay, I know what's going on now. I know what's going on. And my kidney stones come from drinking uh, heavy dyes, red dye 40. So the next time that I did have you know, assist release from my body. I knew what it was. Was it a little scary? Yeah, but I was more calm now because I knew what this was. I have never seen anything like it in my life. And, um, I took pictures. I wish I could post them on here, but I mean, I can't, obviously. Because mm. I don't really know the guidelines regarding that, but I knew right then and there I needed to go to the ER because I I can't even put into words how bad. So I, I when I would walk it was falling down my legs and when we got to the hospital I wasn't able to walk. They had to put me in a wheelchair. Um, I just want to say foremost right at the beginning a lot of doctors helped me today last night and um oh honey i know you're scared i i i, I want to just reach out there and give her a hug because i went through this i i know what she's going through and it, it and it's possibly maybe worse than what i went through so i mean if i was scared for something that is not really life-threatening and hers could be life-threatening. I know she's afraid. I know she's scared. So it's just, I just want to reach out and give her a big, huge hug. And I know, honey. There were some honey. really kind people. Oh. And I really bad. And I kept saying that because in the ER room where they were, you know, trying to figure out what's wrong with me. Yeah. I had blood everywhere. And it was terrifying. And I also have pictures of that. It and is. Some of the nurses seemed shocked, which scared me more. And, um, oh. there was. This is TMI, I'm sorry, but there was like. It's okay, it's okay. I don't want to show my wristband because that's personal information, but globs like this falling out of me of I don't even know what I guess tissue and it was yeah I don't know if it is tissue but it's you know probably parts of what you have I don't know what you have so I'm not trying to self-diagnose but I I know honey honey I, I was there and it happened to me I think it was 
you know, when I was 22, 23, and um, I didn't know I had PCOS. I just thought I was irregular because, you know, maybe because I was a bigger girl, and everybody's like, oh, if you lose some weight, it'll come back, and I thought, well, okay, so I did start losing weight. Actually, that's when it happened, when I, you know, lost a significant amount of weight. I got real serious. I cut myself down to 1,200 calories a day. I went running every day, and actually, that's when it happened. So I don't know if you're trying to up your activity and decrease your food, and that's what might have set it off. It's funny. I know. Oh, my gosh, I know. I, <laughs> I... Me too. Since you're sharing, I'm going to share. When it happened to me, I had so much blood in the waiting room that they said it was disturbing to other people. And they went ahead and took me back. And so I didn't have to wait that long out in the waiting room. So, And yeah, I mean, I, I bled all in the ER room too. And oh, honey, sweetheart, I know it's scary. Uh, I've I've been there and actually in the ER they didn't tell me what was wrong they just told me oh you're you're just having a really bad menstrual cycle and I, I get it they're not gynecologists there so they gave me some birth control pills to try to stop it and then when I finally went to see a real gynecologist he's the one that told me to throw those pills away do not take those pills anymore do not touch those pills anymore he says, you do not want to stop this. This is poisoning your body. You want to get it out. And I'm not saying that's what's happening to Amber right now because I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but he he told me, for me, he told me, you don't want that in your body. That is poison. It's going to reabsorb into your body and it's going to make you sick. You want that out. So, I mean, he did give me some, you know, pain pills if I was having cramps and funny thing I wasn't having cramps I was, I was fine it was just ruining my day and ruining my clothes so god I just want to give her the biggest hug and hold her oh my gosh i I hate it when people are scared and they think they're gonna die and I was there I know how it feels I thought I was gonna die oh my gosh honey it was just like I was peeing I know I know it was so So I was sitting on the bed, and um, I felt something on the side of my leg. And I said, Becky, can you come look? And I, how do you even explain this? Like, it was so bad that it was now seeping through every part of me. Wait, that sounds not out of my it body, but... It's I I get it, honey. Like, I get it. She was now coming out of my pants. I can't uh, even explain it. I know. I, I know. Never honey. In my life. I know, sweetie. Like, in there, I started panicking. I was so scared. I pressed the little um, alert button or whatever, and the nurses came in and they were like really freaked out themselves. But you know, you they had to try their hardest to you know put on a face. And make me feel better. And yeah. I feel so bad because there were so many times people had to come in and clean the whole floor. And they're probably panicked because they're not gynecologists. They're not been trained in gynecology. If you know, if they did have a gynecological nurse come in, is that a word? <laughs> they did have one come in. They'd be used to that. They've they've seen it all. And I'm sure if you went into the ER with like a, a knife in your neck and blood squirting out your jugular vein, they'd probably just look at it like, okay, yeah, we've seen this before. <laughs> and, and it's probably you're showing them something they've never seen before and they're a bit confused and I get it. And, you know, they're they're going to help you. They're going to help you as best they can. And oh, I know you're scared, sweetie. I know you're still scared. It's traumatic. So um, I got my blood taken several times, and um, finally a gyno came in. Good, OBGYN, good. OBGYN, I always just say gyno, huh? Good, good, good. And she scared me a little bit. That's okay. She said she was going to put me on a medicine and see if it will stop the bleeding. That's probably and birth control. Once yeah. it did, 
she thought maybe possibly I would go have surgery and have a what is called rib? DNC. A DNC. Where they are scraping mm-hmm. my uterus. Um, I'm not a doctor, so if I'm misinforming, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's like a pap smear. Um, I also got an ultrasound done of was it my ovaries? My ovaries. So, and your cervix. And my mm-hmm. cervix. So, um, in the ultrasound, they were able to see that I had thick tissue. Yeah, I I know, so, honey. I know, I know, sweetie. Another was you think he was a gyno too? He was like a surgeon. He was a surgeon. But he knew what he was talking about. Um, yeah. He came in very, very stern, very serious, and straight to the point. And he said, you're going to have to have surgery right now. Oh, honey. Yeah. He canceled several people's surgeries. Oh, because sweet. mine was emergency. Oh, sweetie, and sweetie. He literally told the lady that if I don't get surgery, then I'm just going to be in the room to die. And oh, sweetie, that's that's something you just don't want to hear. And it sounds like you got something worse than what I've got. I've just got something that'll ruin my day and my pants. Oh, honey, honey. That was terrifying to hear. Oh. I don't think he knew that I heard because he said it out in the hallway. Okay, I was I was a little upset that, you know, he let you hear that in, in the state you're in. You're already scared. You're already, you you already want to go home and you don't want to be there. And then he said something like that. I thought he said it to you. I didn't know that. I'm sorry, honey. Oh. But he seemed like he truly cared. Really, truly. And he said that by doing this, he's going to take off the tissue. It's supposed to supposedly stop the bleeding. And um, he's gonna test it because it might be cancer. I, I know no. it. It's scary, honey. Oh, I know. I'm freaking out, like terrified. You have a right to freak out, honey. You have a right to freak out. It's scary. Because I've never had surgery before ever. I know. And, I um, know. And I had it done to me, and that's that's how they determined it was PCOS, and it was like it was. It was thickening tissue around the uterus area and on the ovaries and you know they did a scraping and they tested it and they you know that's how they determined it's it is what it is and I know it's scary and I know you're still scared and I don't know if you're waiting for the results I keep stopping too early so and the waiting part is the scariest part honey at my size obviously it's a little uh scary because you hear really bad things and um Long story short, I did have the surgery, and, um, mm-hmm. it was, it felt like it happened within a second, because anesthesia, obviously. Yeah. And, um, they took really good care of me. I'm glad. Afterwards, they told me that I do have a sleep apnea. Yeah. I've never been tested, and, um. And the surgery, but stop breathing a lot. Yeah, sleep apnea is pretty common, and hopefully they give you a CPAP machine or point you in the direction to get one. That they're not hard to get, and a lot, a lot of people do. I just had a message. A lot of people do have sleep apnea. Um, another thing is they had to cut my hymen high that's embarrassing oh um, honey it i know he had to do that to get to where he had to get to get i know <laughs> you know where he had to go yeah and um, yeah he ended up oh that that's a personal thing because uh, i don't know if you all know what it is look it up but that that's something that's that's a that's a personal thing about your body, about a woman's body, that that's uh, some people see it as sacred and oh, sweetie, oh gosh, I I, I wish Be- Becky would just put the camera down and go hug her while she's telling this. It's I want somebody to hug her. Oh my gosh, stitching it back together, which I don't think he didn't have to do that, but I I don't know. Like I said, I don't know 
I know. much about anything. Um, but it's been scary, and I do want to say that I'm still bleeding. Uh, I'm super scared. Yeah, I know, honey. I know. It's okay. He told me it's that okay. I'll, I'll get the results next week. Oh. If I have cancer. Oh, and that's going to be a week of hell, sweetheart. Oh, sweetheart. He just, he was, he was very, to the point, oh. he didn't sugarcoat anything, which, they can't. That's what I need. They really can't. And, um, I'm just so grateful that he really cared. But I'm scared. I know. I know, sweetie. Um, so I was in the hospital for quite some time and um they watched over me after the surgery for a while i'd say about 10 hours and um the nurse i had was so helpful now i'm back home which scares <laughs> me because i'm not under you know the supervision that i wish i could be under you know mm -hmm. so my bed is on the floor and I haven't gotten up because I've been home for a few hours and me and Becky went straight to bed because we yeah. didn't really get any sleep besides on and off sleeping and then when I was on anesthesia. How long was that for? Uh, maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, and I know Becky couldn't be with you and the way hospitals are now, you, you were back there all by yourself and I know when it happened to me, I... I mean, I had my mom back there, but she was freaking out just as bad as I was. <laughs> so, I probably would have done better with nobody back there with me, but I, I know Becky doesn't really freak out like my mom does, and you were probably back there with nobody and all these strangers coming in and out. It's just, oh, honey. Sweetheart. Oh. Um, I just really want positive thoughts prayers why don't you guys wait? yes scared. well i will do honey do, will do do it in the wrist um i got yeah. it here which should already fall off in the middle of my arm on this wrist on this wrist and up here but the wrist that S was sweet. the most painful thing ever <laughs> but um yeah i'm in a lot of pain right now obviously i know um, i know still bleeding really bad, which I'm not supposed to be, so I'm confused. I know. I just know that uh, if it gets worse again, then I'm going to go back to the ER. I get you. I get you. They know what's going on. Like, they saw me last night and this morning and today. Anyways, I just wanted to give you guys an update. All my other videos, there's no meaning to them right now. So I just wanted to let you guys know kind of what's going on. All right? I know. So I'll see you guys later. Bye. You guys. Okay. I, I know. I, I feel for her so bad. And it's scary. That is so scary, honey. Honey. Ah, uh, it is. And now you've got to wait a week before you find out what's wrong. That's going to be the worst part. So please call. Call all your friends. Let them in on it. Let them know what's going on. And... If, if you want to, sometimes it's a personal thing, but, you, you know, you put it out on the internet, so call your friends, let them know what's going on, honey, and, um, we'll call your friends from the past, and I know, uh, Charla, I remember you saying it with Charla and Sarah, and you know, give them a call and tell them, guys, I've, I've got a little scare, and I just need the support of my friends, and... You know, have them come over and watch movies and <laughs> have them come over and, you know, tell silly stories, play some games, try to try to keep your mind as occupied as possible until you get the news. But I know it's never going to leave the back of your mind. And until you get the answers, until you get the results, that's going to be a week of hell, honey, sweetheart. I, I will I'll keep you in my prayers. And I, I really hope. I really hope it's it's not as bad as what it is. I hope it's just as simple as what I had. And it was scary for me, too. And I get it. And I get it. That's what was so bad about this. Is you don't know what's going on with your body. You think you're going to die. And it's scary. It's scary of the unknown. 
so, sweetheart, please take care of yourself, please. And I hope this is a wake-up call and you get a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance and a fifth chance. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you living the life that you can live full of vitality and full of everything. And I, I can see now why the parody channels and the reaction channels are probably going to skew from this, but I want to give you my heartfelt sympathy as a big girl. I've been there. I've been there. I've seen it and I've experienced that. And it's so scary. It is. And especially with you not able to have anyone in there with you. I know, honey. I hope you get better. Take care.